Hello, hello, hello. Happy Sunday. Gotta get my iPad set up here. Sorry, I should have done that ahead of time. <laughs> All right. Hi. How's everyone? Let's see. I have seven people here. Who do I have here? Hello. Nice to see you. I'm good today. How are you? I'm wearing my jersey. The Steelers, when I came upstairs about 15 minutes ago, it was 24 to nothing. But since I've been up here, I heard my neighbor's cowbell. So that means that the Browns must have scored. So anyway... I don't think it's a shutout anymore, but I'm pretty confident that the Steelers are still ahead because I haven't heard my husband like yell down there yet. <laughs> anyway, it's been a great, nice, relaxing Sunday. I hope your weekend's been great so far, and I will get right to talking about sewing. What are you all doing? Hi, Silverleaf. What will I be sewing today? Well, as soon as the chat's over, I have uh, the Breckenridge um, by Love Notions. I'm testing it, and my final version I still need to fix, so I'll be doing that, finishing that up after the chat. That's what I'm working on today. Um, I have a jersey like this cut out for my husband, but I needed to order some more vinyl to finish the letters and stuff. So I'll be doing that probably tomorrow or Tuesday. And I have, um, let's see, what have I got coming up this week? I'm going to be working on a video for you guys on uh, using the Cricut. Um, and also the differences between the Cricut and Silhouette. I don't have a lot of knowledge about the other ones that are out there like the Brother or that Janome has one as well. But I will see what I can find out about them. Uh, I do know about the Silhouette and the Cricut. I just got the Cricut. I did have a Silhouette for years. So um, I'm pretty well versed in both of those. So I want to show you some things you can do. And a lot of the people on here have said that they would really like to see a video about that once in a while. So I will, I'm going to start a uh, once in a while uh, video on Cricut and just different things you can do to embellish your clothing. Um, like this is all done on my Cricut and my heat press. Um, the sportslogo.net, you can get any sports logo in SVG, which is awesome. Like, that's like a hidden gem right there. Uh, SVG files are just golden. That's what you want when you're dealing with um, cutting machines. So definitely um, a good find there. So, well, let's see. Let me see what everyone is up to here. Hi, Teresa. Hi, Sonia. Hi, Elizabeth. Hi, Jay. Out of control, Mason. Hi. I want to know what that name means. You have to tell me what that means. <laughs> Hi, Sadie. Good to see you. Hi, Ramona. Cold Wyoming. Burr. It's chillier here. But I have to say, it's been sunny and the color is phenomenal this year. Has anybody else noticed that? I, I mean, the leaves are amazing. Hi, Anessa. Oh my goodness, that quilt is beautiful. That quilt top you made. Um, if you're not, if you haven't seen it on the Facebook group, uh, Anessa posted a picture of this beautiful rainbow that she sewed together. And uh, it's, it's really awesome. You should be very proud of that, Anessa. Hi, Shirley. Hi, Jay. Silverleaf. Hi, uh, see Sonia. Tamara, good to see you. <laughs> yes, Cricut Maker is what I have. So I will be showing a lot with the Cricut Maker. Hi, Tony. <laughs> Allison, nice to see you. Been, oh, we're making simple things for the week for Christmas. Lots of different aprons and bags and 
Oh, that's great. I love little gifts like that, that you can just even make and have on hand um, in case someone um, needs something or, you know, you just like at the last minute need a birthday gift. Um, I use my Cricut a lot for things like that. I keep like um, a little thing. If you do a lot of things with a Cricut or Silhouette at the dollar store, this is no lie. At the dollar store, there's an aisle where they have some like t-shirts and they're Gildan, you know, Anvil, the good, the good brands. But what you have to do is you have to look through them and you have to like sort of make sure the sizes are marked correctly because I've found a few of them were in there probably because they put the wrong tag or something. So you have to verify the sizes. But you can get those for a dollar and keep them on hand and when you need a quick gift for somebody all you need to do is cut it with your Cricut or whatever and heat press it and you've got a personalized gift that has barely cost you anything and very quick to do and people love something people love t-shirts I mean is there anybody who doesn't love a t-shirt that has something on it that means something to them I don't think that there are um, very many people who don't just really enjoy that. Hi Elaine, nice to see you. Hi Alberta. You should be super proud Anessa, definitely. Hi Ruth. Hi Amelia. Victoria, Texas, down my old stopping grounds right there. I lived in Conroe for, for several years. Hi Barbara. Oh, you're going to make pencil pouches for Operation Christmas Child boxes. That is a great idea. And masks and a fleece jacket. Wow, you've got a nice little um, set of things in front of you there. I like that. Allison, my cat would never sleep in a cat bed. <laughs> uh, yeah, my, my dog sleep. My, both my dogs sleep in dog beds. Um, in fact, they get really out of they get really put out if the door isn't left open to our room <laughs> because they go to bed before we do. It's kind of hilarious. They just decide to go to bed and they just go upstairs. <laughs> we come up and they're just sound asleep. Oh, uh, let's see. Hi, Marilyn. Nice to see you. 34 degrees in Minnesota. Oh no, please. That's probably moving our way. Ah. Great tip for dollar store tea. Oh yeah. I, I do enjoy those and, and they're, I think they hold up fine. It's just that the sizes are not marked. I, I got a large for my son and I, you know, I embellished it and um, then it wasn't the size that it said it was and it was way too small. So just be careful of that. But otherwise, they're really good t-shirts. I picked up some Gildan ones the other day in youth sizes and I mean, you know, when you either maybe your kid needs a quick gift for a birthday party or you want to just surprise your grandkids or something. It's really nice to just have them in the drawer. I always have onesies too. I keep a pack of onesies all the time, especially newborn or three months, zero to three. And it's really an easy, just quick little gift. All you need to do is, you know, put something on a onesie, you know, buy a rattle or a stuffed animal or something or a gift card or something like that. And it's just a nicer way to give it if you give a, a little onesie with it. So, Hi, Jay. Let's see. Love those sorts of teas. I do, too. Uh, oh, Barbara collects aprons and old-time bonnets. That's cool. That is really cool. <laughs> yeah, Burr is right. Your supper is calling. I have to love you all and leave you. <laughs> We understand, Jay. Uh, maybe when you're done eating, if we're still here, pop back in. I do have to stick to an hour today, though, because I do have to get that uh, that final done for Love Notions. I'm always the last one. I don't know why. I, I mean, I don't. It's not that I procrastinate necessarily. It's just that I have so many things going on and, you know, between worship and everything. And it's always on a Sunday when they're due. And my weekends with church are just crazy. And yeah, so I'm going to be probably uh, putting those online about 11 tonight, probably. But the, it looks good, though. <laughs> I just got myself a pop. Okay, let's see. 
Okay. I, you know what, Alberta, I'm going to start like with the cricket. I'm going to start with, um, you know, this is, this is what you can do and, you know, start with a simple project and just show you how I do. I probably use one of those dollar t-shirts and put something on it so that you can see exactly what, you know, something you could do. And um, it's a lot of fun. And I think Cricut is much more user friendly than Silhouette. There are other differences, but I can tell you that it would be, I think as a beginner, much easier to start with a Cricut. I, I started with Silhouette. Their software is really, really good, but it can be, um, I, I didn't have a problem because I, I know Adobe, I know Illustrator, and I know Photoshop because of my photography background. So it wasn't a problem for me, but there's so much power in that Silhouette software. But it can be, like, I think a little scary to people who don't know how to use it. Hi, Rebecca. Good to see you. Ah, you're looking for permission to cut? <laughs> hmm. You know, I just, I don't trace them either. I just print the, print out more pattern pieces when I need them. I use scrap paper. All my patterns have something else on the back of them, usually music. <laughs> a, lot, a lot of times my, I use old sheet music from church. They're, they're just going to throw away and, and recycle. I just bring it home and print patterns on them on the other side. So, um, Tony finished her willow dress. Okay, I'll have to check that out on the Facebook page. Awesome. It's still not quite right. Uh, I'll have to look at that, see if I can, you know, give you any wisdom on it. I didn't, I apologize, I didn't see it. Um, just a reminder, if you want me to see something, definitely tag me. Um, because now we have over a thousand, do you believe we have over a thousand members in that Facebook group, which is awesome. I love that we're so big, but I hate that I can't read every single thing because I, I just don't have the time to do that. So, um, let me know. I will. Uh, if you want me to tag me on anything that you really want me to see, um, just please just tag my name. Hello, Brenda. Thank you again for the coffee. You're so sweet. Brenda has bought me coffees. If you don't know what that is, it's just like a, it's sort of like a tip thing. Um, and I really appreciate that. It, it, more so even just knowing that you, you appreciate and care so much. Thank you so, so much. Heidi, hi, nice to see you. Heidi made a Terra tunic yesterday. Awesome, and a classic tee next. I want to see that Terra. I love that Terra pattern. I, you know, I made one for a video, you know, when they were doing a, I think it was a Feature Friday. I try to make the Feature Friday if I don't haven't already. And um, unless it's just something that I wouldn't wear or wouldn't, none of my grandkids or kids would wear. Um, but otherwise, I try to do it. And the Terra tunic, um, I made it kind of in a hurry and it wasn't even like seasoned for long sleeves or three quarter sleeves. And then the other day I pulled it out and wore it and it was so comfortable and I got compliments all day long on it. It is a, I think an underrated pattern. I think it's one that we kind of overlook that is really, really nice. So I just encourage you to check that out. Hello, Patricia, I'm glad you didn't miss us. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Elizabeth. It is kind of cool that we have over, I don't know what that means, but I think thousands a nice round number. And to me, it means that we have a community now of people who are helping each other. And you know, I said, tag me if you want me to see it, but there are people on there who are even better at knowing what to do sometimes than, than what I would know. We're all in this together. So um, I love that you know, when, sometimes when I see something, I'll say, oh, what, what can I do to help that person? And then somebody else has already answered uh, completely correctly. So there's a lot of help on there. Let's see. Oh, thank you so much, Tamara. I'm glad you found us. And uh, thank you. I really appreciate the recommendations. Um, we are... I say we all the time and it's, I don't, I have, well, I guess it's, I have a team and that my husband like 
sometimes will do the dishes so I can come up here and do, do a video or, you know, he, he helps me with everything. And he's going to be doing a video for me. Get this. He, I, I don't know if you've seen my pegboard. Sometimes it's behind me um, when I do my videos. Uh, that pegboard is amazing. And he did that uh, when he gifted me this room about oh, five and a half years ago for Mother's Day. He put this room together for me. And that pegboard, it's like four feet by four feet by six feet. Like it's huge. And it's already like busting at the seams. So he's going to put up another one and just like a, I think we're going to do three by four or whatever over there above my heat press. And so um, since he's not working right now, I said, why don't we do a video together and you can show people how to make that pegboard and how, you know, how to hang it away from the wall and all that stuff. And so he said, sure. So we're going to be doing a video together coming up here as soon as I think we have everything we need here, but I, we just need to make sure. And then we're going to do that video together and you can see how quick it's well sort of quick and easy it is to um, put up a pegboard and organize all your stuff. And you know what I love about that is that I have stopped buying things I already have. I, I did that so much when my stuff wasn't organized. I would go to the store and I would, you know, if I needed this kind of button or whatever, I would go to the store and I would, you know, buy the buttons. When, and then like two weeks later, I'd look and see, oh, I already had these, you know? So it's really, really great to sort of help you keep track of what you have. And that's just one benefit of it. But I'm giving away the whole video here, so I won't, t I won't talk anymore. Hello, Paula. Good to see you. Oh, you misplaced your hand sewing kit, Brenda. I don't know if I'd be sad or not. <laughs> I hate hand sewing, although I did make myself this little basket that has a pin cushion and stuff to make it a little bit more fun, but <laughs> I don't like hand sewing. I'll almost do anything not to hand sew. I remember back in the day when my mom and I sewed together, she was a believer in sewing hems by hand. That was her thing. They never do it on a machine. And yeah, that didn't last for me very long. <laughs> I, I'm like, mom, there's this blind hem foot, you know, and she's like, oh, no, 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 no. We got to do that by hand. And I'm, yeah, that's one thing that I don't do like Dorothy. <laughs> Hi, Adrian. Good to see you. Glad you're here today. Hi, Jana. South Africa. What time is it in South Africa? I, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, mess up your name. I know. Gertie? Did I say that right? Gertie? Is it like Gertie? I hope I didn't say it wrong. <laughs> if you can phonetically tell me how to say it correctly, I'm really apologize if I messed that up. Hi, Marg. Nice to see you from California. <laughs> when you greet everyone and wave, I wave back. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I wish I could see everybody. I wish I could do that, but YouTube won't let you do that. At least not yet. It would be a really nice feature if they'd let you have more than one person in the, you know, it's like Zoom. But um, the when I get the pay, I know I've told everybody that I was going to be doing the Patreon thing, and I still am. I'm just working out details. I do not want to do it unless I am completely ready to launch and I don't want to do a something where people are not getting you know what they good value so um, I'm just make, I'm gonna do it though but I'm just making sure that I am doing it correctly hello Nancy good to see you So is it like 10 there, Paula? She said there's the same time in Sweden as South Africa. <laughs> oh, bummer, Brenda. 
Well, you know, I have archives of thread probably from the 1960s and on. <laughs> any, any little scrap that I've had. So if there's a color, I might, I might actually find it in my box. So um, if you have a number or a kind or whatever, I will definitely look for you and send it to you if I have it. <laughs> I have all my, you know, my mom and I, that's the thing. Like I would go buy thread when I already had that color, you know, and I've really stopped doing that. And, you know, sewing is a, an expensive hobby if you do that. Um, if you don't like make, like make something out of your scraps and, you know, cut your fabric, you know, um, carefully so that you, one, don't make mistakes cutting and two, you know, that you get what you can out of it um, before you pitch it and whatever so um, it can be a really really uh, money saving hobby but it can be really expensive if you don't um, sort of keep track of your supplies and use what you have Let's see Anessa's tracing lindens for myself and my older son ah fun lindens a nice shirt I like the linden shirt a lot Support the boar, boar from South Africa. Oh. Uh, oh, let me, fill me in on what that is. I'm sorry if I'm being, like, I just don't know. Let me know what that is. <laughs> I do love people from all over, too, though. Love it. It's 9 o'clock. Okay, cool. Do you do, um, do you do, uh, Daylight savings, or will you stay the same after two weeks from now? I know we'll, we'll be falling back in a few weeks. That's an extra hour sleep. The extra hour sleep that we lost in the spring is coming back. <laughs> Tamara works from home in Chicago, but most of her nurse team is in Cape Town, South. Oh, wow. Cape Town, South Africa. That's awesome. Hmm. Well, let me know because I have like button thread and, you know, a lot of stuff that my mom used to do that I don't. It might be older, but I might have it. So <clears throat> let me know if you take a picture. Oh, if you can't, no, you can't do that. You can't take a picture of the spool if you don't have it. <laughs> but if you can describe, you know, what, what it was, maybe I have it. I'd be glad to send it to you. Oh, it's a word for farmer. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. Hello, Dee. Nice to see you. Greeley, Colorado. Beautiful country. Colorado is so gorgeous. I've only been in, in and out of there on airplanes, um, so I've never actually stopped there. Uh, but you can see from the plane how gorgeous those mountains are and stuff. Just gorgeous. Hello, Jana. I'm actually in the U.S. too. What state are you in, Jana? I'm in Ohio. And believe me, next week you're going to know that. The Buckeyes are back. Yay. Uh, next weekend on Sunday. I like my Buckeyes even more than Steelers. I'm really more of a college football person, um, but my husband loves the NFL. So we, we watch the Steelers together. <laughs> Hello, Leslie. Nice to see you. Okay, yep. Our clocks do as well. Yep, we do the same, Allison. We um, fall, fall back, so we're going to set them back. Jana's in South Africa, but from Texas. Awesome. What part of Texas, Jana? Thank you, Paula. <laughs> this was this was the one I did the video on today, and I did this. Natita um, from So Natural Jane asked me, well, we were both wanting to collab together, and then um, she said, why don't we do the game day jerseys? And I'd already done a video on them, but I did like the kid version, 
And I just thought, yeah, why not? Why not do one, you know, in the middle of football season? So we were going to do it on a day when the Steelers and the Packers played, but they don't this year. So um, enter COVID, right? <laughs> so they don't play each other this year. And um, so we just picked a random week to do it. So, but, you know, the Steelers are playing the Browns today. And I've only heard the cowbell once. <laughs> so, um, yeah, he's at it over there, though. He knows now that you guys can hear it. Because I, <laughs> I talked to him and I um, showed him a comment uh, from earlier today where it said, um, I hope we hear the cowboy or the cowbell loud go Browns. I showed it to him and he laughed. <laughs> so he knows you guys can hear him. The crazy neighbor across the street. <laughs> They're really, really nice people. Yes. Um, Natita is a wonderful person. I am not a Bowling Green fan, Leslie. Um, I should be because I live in Perrysburg, which is like a sister city almost to Bowling Green. We're like right there. But my husband used to teach at the University of Toledo, so we're kind of rocket fans. <laughs> um, but when they're not playing UT, then I'm a, then I like the Falcons. Hello, Diane. Welcome. Glad you could make it today. All right, it's past time for me to give you a tip. And you know, it's not so much of a tip today as it is a reminder. So I can point back to sewing fails that I've had. And many of them came from fabric being manipulated so much that it's sort of lost its shape. And um, having I having skipped a step. And I think you probably know where I'm going with this already. Never, ever skip stay stitching. And, it, and even stay stitch more than they tell you to. Okay, so stay stitching is just where you sew like a scant of the seam. So you just inside where the seam will be. And then it stays, like it keeps the shape of the fabric in certain areas like necklines, arm size, um, just different things. Any time it goes across a bias, because if there's a bias, it will stretch. I'm not talking really about knits, although knits you could, I mean, there's a few places like plackets and things where stay stitching is not a bad idea. But with wovens, like um, a couple of fabrics that are like really bad about it are like rayon chalet, um, gauze, you know, um, cotton lawn can be sometimes. So anything that, you know, Anything that you've over manipulated, right? If you've had to rip out and that kind of stuff. So stay stitch. If you do that, it will keep its shape and go together a lot easier. And it's so tempting when you just want to get done to not do the stay stitching in the beginning. But you should do that the first thing because the longer you wait, the more you will have manipulated the fabric and the more chance it will stretch out of shape. I think right, rayon chalet should be stay stitched the day that you cut it out and should not sit around um, cut and not stay stitched. That's just my opinion because it stretches out of shape so, so easily. And those fabrics are great fabrics to wear. Um, I love rayon chalet, but you, have, you just have to stay stitch it because it just, it grows. It just grows. <laughs> you know, if you're you know, and then you have a collar that is too small for the neckline because the neckline is stretched out of shape or vice versa. So it's just more of a reminder than a tip today. Never, ever skip stay stitching. That's my, that's my tip for today. <laughs> yeah, I do think it's, it's not a bad idea to do it on knits. Um, it, it could help you too if you, you know, I was showing you guys in a couple videos ago about stretching the, the um, neck band and not stretching the main garment um, when you're applying a neck band on knits. If you stay stitch the knit, um, of course, afterwards, it's going to probably pop the state, but it doesn't matter then. Um, but if you stay stitch that neckline before you do that, that'll help you remember not to stretch it. So good idea. 
<laughs> Hello, Diane. <laughs> nice to see you. Let's see. Where do I get four-way stretch fabric for little kids PJs? Um, I bought mine at the fabric outlet, Zinks, um, but they have some at Joann's. Now, you know, they have to print on there that it's not intended for sleepwear because it doesn't have the um, fire retardant on it or whatever. So you might, you know, it, I guess it just depends if you, you know, you just have to accept the risk or whatever. I mean, I hopefully, you know, God forbid that the kids are pretty good and, you know, the house, my grandkids' houses are safe. So I don't worry about that too much. But um, yeah, usually just at uh, any fabric store, just look for cotton jersey. Um, and they have like a baby rib, which is really, really nice for kids' jammies. And I mean, I think Zinks has it on their website too, and you can get like some really, really neat juvenile prints as well. And um, you can get on Etsy, there's a lot of really cute uh, kids' fabrics. Um, there again, they have to say it's not for sleepwear, but that's more of a legal thing, I think. So. Hi, Katie. Good to see you. Any tips for fabric shopping right now? I'm finding a hard time to find fabrics at Joann's. Yeah, um, Joann's is, um, only has what I need about 50% of the time. I'm going to be honest. I love what they have, um, but they don't have uh, enough of a variety. Um, Hobby Lobby has some, and when they do have fabrics, they have good fabric. I, I will say that. They just don't have a big selection. Um, but I would go to online, but you could go to Joann's and feel the fabric and read the instructions at the top of what's in it. Get yourself really familiar with how different fabrics feel so that you kind of know them when you go to descriptions online and kind of know what you're getting. Um, you can get swatches sometimes for free from different places so that you can kind of see it ahead of time or you can at least feel what that content looks like. I have a book called the Fabric Swatch Book that has little swatches in it of different kinds of fabric. I like it um, and it, it's, it's real easy to identify fabric that way. Um, but the best value, in my opinion, is Vogue Fabrics, just Vogue, VogueFabrics.com, I believe. They have a like a subscription thing where they send, um, I think it's bi-monthly, this or maybe quarterly, this like their collection, and so they have little swatches of each fabric, and the content, and so you can kind of feel that, and then you know when you go looking online at even other places kind of, well, when it says, you know, 10 ounce denim, what, how thick is 10 ounce? So there's a trick to shopping online, but I think you get a better value and much, much more selection. Don't forget Amazon too. Amazon is, is our fabric.com is owned by Amazon now. So uh, sometimes I've gotten it just a little cheaper through Amazon than actually on their website. And they pretty much have most of their stock on Amazon as well. Yeah, I just got the first, you know, the first one. Oh, and the, the swatch books from Vogue, that's a subscription. I think it's like $5 or whatever for uh, each one, but if they will send out back copies for free. Now, I don't know what they do about shipping and handling, but I just kind of, uh, you know, signed up, you know, threw one in on, on another order and they didn't charge any extra shipping, but I'm not sure. You might have to pay some postage. I'm not sure about that, but um, they will do their, their back issues for free. So it's a great way to get familiar with how fabric looks and feels. Agreed, Diane. I love those companies. You are right about that. I love um, Surge Fabrics. I love Girl Charlie. If you want knits, Girl Charlie is definitely a place to check out. So So English is really good as well. Um, trying to think. I did the 
my favorite online stores a while back. So there is a video if you want to check that out. Um, back, I don't know, several months ago I did a video on the top 10 online stores. Oh, okay. The back copies are three dollars each with free shipping. Thank you. They must have just changed that because I, the one I got was free, but maybe that's with an order or something. Good deal. I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna order some more because it really is neat to check them out. I want to join that club. When I think when I went to join, they weren't doing it right now because of the, because of their cut staff with COVID. Allison, you are going to learn, and you're going to get your confidence back. I know you are. Um, you're, I mean, we're always our worst critic, right? But when you have a community of people that you can share things with, and they can give you good critical but positive feedback, it just means the world because, you know, you have somebody to chat with about it and somebody that can give you an attaboy. So, I mean, when you go, oh, look how I matched these stripes to, you know, your kid or your husband or whatever. They're like, yeah, nice. <laughs> you know, if they don't have a clue how hard it is. <laughs> so, um, it's really nice to have a group of sewing friends to uh, share those successes and failures. I mean, we all have fails and um, usually the main thing is we always learn something through the fails. My, what I shared about stay stitching, I learned the hard way. <laughs> so let's see, I had to catch up here. Um, I'm going to go hunt for that, the link on my video I did about online shopping in just a minute. Yes, uh, Fabric Mart is wonderful with their sales, agreed. Yep, Nancy, you are so right. If you don't skip the stay stitching, what ends up is a much better experience uh, in the long run. All right. Okay, let's see. Yes, it is. I love this community. I feel like I have friends all over. I was talking to my husband and I said, oh, I have some friends in South Africa. And he's like, what? I'm like, I do. I do have friends in South Africa and Sweden and the UK. I love it. I just love it. We are all over, but we're all in this together. And it's a happy place. It's a safe place because there are a lot of places online right now that aren't real safe. Um, a lot of places that you can get into a, a exchange of words that can just be awful. And this place is free of that, completely free of that. Um, we're just all about sewing and, you know, supporting each other through it. I'm going to go find my video topic for you. Let's see. I know it's like one of my most popular ones, so let me... There we go. Here is the video for um, top 10 online fabric shops. I just pasted that on there. Hi, Deborah. Nice to see you. Got to catch up here. <laughs> Debbie Shore Sewing. I've never heard of that, Brenda. I'm going to have to check that out. Is that um, in the U.S.? Or let me know. I want to I wanna check that website out. Yeah, shipping is really a bummer, <laughs> especially if somebody's having a good price on something, and then it's like, yeah, <laughs> it hurts to pay more for the shipping than you did for the fabric oftentimes. That is true, Diane. That is true. My problem is I, 
unless I go to a warehouse, I don't usually buy a whole bunch at once, but um, you could definitely do that. I know there's several places that will do that. I, um, D, I have gotten things from Knit Pop. I liked them, but didn't really order through Knit Pop, though. I ordered through their Etsy shop. I think I got some elastics and things for, like, underwear. And I was happy. I was real happy with, you know, everything that I got. So, um, and I didn't know it was Knit Pop until it came, and there was a little Knit Pop, you know, the, on the receipt and the little flyer that was in there and stuff. So, yeah, I was real happy. Oh, that's because I'm already on my site, Sadie. It was easy. Because <laughs> I'm already on my site, so I just minimized it and grabbed it. If I had to go out of YouTube and find it, you know, then it would have been harder. <laughs> Thank you. That's awesome. Fabric for underwear. Well, we've talked a lot about that in the past, but I like um, I like the definitely something with a little cotton in it. Um, I do I do make it out of double brush poly that I have left, but those are better worn in the winter time because they just they don't breathe like the cotton does. I like the cotton ones better. Cotton lycra is awesome because it has a little bit of um, you know just the lycra in there is kind of kind of holds you in a little bit a little bit of holds its shape I guess um, but the cotton spandex blends the thinner ones are nice as well they breathe really well 100% um, cotton is of course always good um, like cotton jersey it just depends on what you like and you can turn any pair of underwear into a shaper if you add some power net so that's always a, an option too Half yard sewing club bags, quilts. Oh, how fun. I'd love to see your dolls, Brenda. Post them. I don't know if you've posted them yet, um, but if you would, post them on Facebook and tag me so I can see them. Uh, yeah, you could use t-shirt fabric for panties. Um, I actually stuck the remnants of this. This is cotton lycra. I stuck the remnants in my underwear box to make un black underwear with. So, yeah, you can definitely do that. I'm going to have to check that out. Um, what was that link again? Debbie Shore. I'm going to look that up. Awesome. No, oh, Dotties? I've never heard of them. Oh, how fun. Your grandson designed a quilt? That's amazing. That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> you wouldn't want my dogs beside me, believe me. <laughs> they're so sweet, but they're just... They don't have any, you know, they just don't have any um, social filter. That's what it is. They don't have a social filter. They just think everybody exists to love on them. And so they just, you know, smash up against everybody who sees them and look up at you with these big golden retriever eyes. They're just, they're adorable, but they can be much for other people, I guess, because they just, you know, they just love 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 and everything I sew has at least one dog hair in it if not more but I don't know I try you know when I'm making my little one granddaughter is allergic to dogs so when I sew for her I try to be really meticulous and not let anything hit the floor and you know the dogs never come in the sewing room I won't let them because sometimes I have a stray pin on the floor or whatever I don't want them to get their paw or anything so they're not allowed in here and um, so you know, I keep it in here and I, you know, but it's hard because, you know, it's kind of everywhere. When you have two golden retrievers, hair is like everywhere. 
Barbara, my favorite panty pattern so far has been the Patterns for Pirates Fierce Undies. They have the high rise, mid rise, and low rise, and I think they have thong. I wouldn't make that, but some people like those. And um, that's the one that I've been making. I, I like the mid rise because I have a really short rise, so the mid rise ends up being like a high rise on me. Um, I like that pattern a lot. I'm interested in trying the uh, Rebecca Page pattern because she does bands with self fabric and I want to try that. Um, I know you can do that, but I wouldn't, I would recommend getting a pattern that calls for that instead of just substituting it for the elastic because it's going to be a different ratio and everything. So I would just, um, I would definitely get a pattern that actually incorporates bands. That's, I think it would be a lot easier. And they're pretty cheap, too. Your grandson? So that's awesome, Diane. That's amazing. I like Liz Sews. She's, she's very good. I agree. I have not tried her uh, panty pattern, though or self-drafting. That's awesome. Yeah, I think it's really important for anybody online to not assume that people know everything. I try really, really hard to do that, um, start from the very beginning. It's like you don't, you don't want to, you know, say from the beginning, but then you don't want to leave more advanced people just rolling their eyes either. So it's like a real hard thing. But um, like when I do this first cricket video, you know, there's going to be a lot of people where like they probably would just skip it because it's going to be real basic. But there's a lot of people who don't really know where to start with that too. So um, yeah, that's, I think that um, it'll be, it'll be good. Hmm. Sweatshirts, they do have like a sweatshirt fleece. Um, Surge Fabrics, I won some on Surge Fabrics that I really like. Um, they have like a, a, like a fleecy inside and sweatshirt outside. Um, but you gotta be careful of not just getting fleece, regular fleece, because regular fleece, a lot of it doesn't stretch very much. So you wanna make sure that it has you know, the required amount of stretch. The spiky thingy. <laughs> That's so cute. I love that. <laughs> you have a Mastiff, a Great Dane puppy, and a Maltese puppy. Oh, <laughs> Aww, so cute. I'm, I'm a dog person, really, to the core. I love my doggies. <laughs> I actually let my 10-year-old granddaughter use the rotary cutter for the first time a few weeks ago. And she does fine with it, but you know, um, I have the Kai one that you, the blade doesn't come out unless you press it down. That's the only one I will let her use. But she did good. She, she cut out uh, a little LDT for herself and did really, really well. Yorkies are so cute and they don't shed I don't think do they I don't think they shed like my dogs do the only downside to go literally the only downside to golden retrievers is that they shed they're amazing dogs um, just amazing and the, also because they're big dogs they they uh, don't their lifespan is not as much as like your little Yorkies would be No, they don't. <laughs> oh, that's a good idea. Just use a pair of your underwear and draft a pattern. You could do that easily. Oh, Sadie said the Yorkies don't shed. I'm like, I thought you were saying the Golden Retrievers don't shed. And I'm like, yeah, they do. They are cute. I love Yorkies. They're so cute. My friend has 
um, two of them, and they're they're really cute. Uh, one of them's name is Buckeye, <laughs> so I wonder where that came from. <laughs> My um, dogs are smart, don't you think? They're just really, like, I got out um, the cheese grater, right? When we got home from church today, and I, I made steak, and I also had baked potato, and I grabbed our cheese grater to grate some cheese to put on top of the potatoes, and the dogs know what the cheese grater is. Like, they know that I'm going to get out the block of cheese when I have the cheese grater in my hand. And they just sit there and looking up at me while I'm grating cheese, hoping I'll drop a morsel. <laughs> so funny. Of course, I always give them a little bit, but it's just like, I, I swear, like they know what that is. It blows my mind how smart they can be. Cats rule. Cats are nice. I'm not, I've never had one. I'm not really a cat person, but you know, not against them either. So I think I love animals anyway, any kind. Has anybody ever sewn for their dogs or cats? I know Ellie and Mac has some dog patterns that are pretty neat. Um, I was thinking I might do that. Um, my, okay, newsflash, and they better not be watching, but my grandkids are getting a puppy for Christmas. So I think I might make a um, a little like the dog hoodie or t-shirt or something um, for them you know put it like they're my, they'll they'll have it already when they come to my house so I can give that to them maybe have something on, under the tree for their doggy too <laughs> If you find a good dog bed pattern, let me know. But they have to be big for mine. <laughs> oh, a ginger cat called George. Cute. Yeah, I had somebody at wanted me to com wanted to commission me to make a coat for his dog, and yeah, I, I. Didn't I don't know anything about you know fitting a dog's body, so I opted not to do that. But I mean, if I have a pattern, then I, I would do it. <laughs> she ate it, Leslie. <laughs> That's so funny. I bet you weren't laughing then, but it is funny now, huh? <laughs> you can't be bought. That's awesome, Rebecca. A tutu for your grandpup. <laughs> uh, uh, two yellow lab girls. Oh, I love labs. They have the same personality like golden retrievers. They're just so laid back and easy and lovable and yeah. Made an outdoor cot using PVC pipe for frame and old denim jeans. Oh my goodness. That's awesome. I never heard of an outdoor cot like that for pets, but that would be really nice. <laughs> Your dog likes carrots? That's crazy. That is awesome. That is really, it's a great idea, Nancy. Um, do you have pictures of it? We'd love to see it. I know everybody would love to see it. They are sweet and loyal. Yeah. I love dogs. <laughs> so. How's everybody doing with Christmas? Are we doing any sewing for Christmas? Ramona, I just downloaded that one too, so I'm excited to do that um, as well. I'll probably, if I, if I do make those, I probably will do a video on those because that'd be something I really haven't seen any 
anything like that on online. I try to do topics that it aren't oversaturated, which is why I haven't done much on the cricket. But um, a lot of people would just kind of like to know why do I need one or what can I do with it, you know? And um, there's a lot of a lot of excellent help out there online for cricket. When you're serging a sleeve on, do you have the sleeve up facing you or the other way? I have the sleeve up. Now, I've heard, I've done it both ways, but I, I like um, sort of having that sleeve on top just to make sure where it's going, that the edges are lined up and stuff. But I have heard, like when I took a course from... Um, Janet Prey, the Islander thing, the, you know, the piece that's the longest should, is, if it's on the bottom, it's better, I guess, so, um, it's actually better to have the, um, sleeve on the bottom, from what I understand, but I think it's hard to see, so I do it the other way, but I guess I've kind of done both ways, and I just, prefer to do it with the sleeve on top just you know but go slow I mean either way you do it just go slow and you know um if you've got it like if you if you've clamped like a clip here and then I always do um at the ends and then you know right that first sort of grade up like that or you know dip up that isn't meant to be stretched, so I'll do that, and then I'll clip it there. So then I know between that and the sleeve cap is where it needs to stretch and come together. So um, then I'll, you know, sort of stretch it out, and then I kind of grab halfway, you know, and do that. Um, it works out pretty well. Just go slow. I think that's just the key to a lot of things, just slow. Slow and steady. <laughs> Did that answer your question, Mary Alice? I hope so. Sorry if I read that wrong. <laughs> Please do, Ramona. I want to see. I definitely want to see. Definitely check out Crafty Gemini. I love, I love Crafty Gemini. <laughs> that wasn't a very good way. I love Crafty Gemini. She has some amazing um, things. She, she is wildly popular, and I loved watching her. I really do. Oh, my goodness. A circuit breaker. Here for four weeks. Hmm. Oh. oh, three. Yeah, that would be hard. Allison says her dog has only three legs and it's harder to fit him. That would be hard. Oh, hello, Sarah. Sorry, I didn't see that. Just now catching up. Nice to see you here. Oh, that's a great idea, Diane. Purple for all the rough time we've all had this year. This has been, I don't know, I think the hardest year in my lifetime. And I don't know, between now and the end of the year, I really don't see it getting a lot better. As far as, uh, you know, COVID and everything. Um, it's different, that's for sure. Um, but God is still God. And... Um, there is still goodness. Um, it's just a little harder to find it sometimes. <laughs> Cloth bags. Nice idea.
Oh, that's a great idea, Rebecca. Lone Star Santas. I might have to check that out. You know, if you have, that's a great thing to do with remnants. Um, that's a wonderful thing to do. All right. Ramona, she said COVID. Wow. That's, that's, I won't say amazing. That, I mean, mind-boggling to have that many people at your church get it. I've only known really one person who's had it, and that's my sister-in-law. And that was over 4th of July, and we were around her, but um, must have she must have been exposed after that. And um, she was quite sick, but she stayed at home. She didn't have to go to the hospital, and she did fine. But, um, yeah, it's, a, it's scary stuff for sure. Aww. I love all these ideas, you guys. It's so much. The, the problem is it's like you can't do them all. I wish we could do them all. A raincoat. Uh, for an adult or for a kid, Kim? Um, because on the Love Notions blog this week, um, I think was I think it was Pat English did a raincoat out of their Hazelwood hoodie um, pattern, and it was adorable. She did for her grand her granddaughter, but that's a kid's pattern. Oh. Wow. I'm really glad you're feeling better, Ramona. Wow. Oh, Rebecca. That's awful. I'm I'm going back and reading some I missed here. I'm so sorry about your your mom. That's so hard. I miss my mom so much. But I'm glad she's not here for all this. She was a medical train wreck, so she would not have done well through this time. So in that respect, I'm glad that she's just in heaven with Jesus instead of having to deal with this um, stuff here. But, yeah, it's so hard. It, you know, you lost her in March, so it's still new. What I, what I will tell you, because my mom has been, let's see, <sighs> 25 years since I lost my mom and what I can tell you is that with time the memories start to get sweeter and you're able to smile through the memories instead of just being feeling that horrible pang of loss doesn't mean that you miss her any less or anything but it's a little bit easier to talk about her to um, remember things and smile about them instead of just, you know, realizing again, oh, she's gone, you know, that part lasts a while. And just uh, be patient with yourself through it. Allow yourself to grieve. It's not something you can rush. Um, not at all. Um, I still talk to my mom in the kitchen and in the sewing room. I mean, I know that she's in heaven and she's at the party already, saving me a place. But, um, you know, I can hear her voice tell me things that she used to tell me. Like, you know, oh, she was a big, like, scrub that chicken. She always wanted me to scrub the chicken. So, you know, um, she never thought that the gro grocery places, like, cleaned them enough. So she always told me that. And, and sewing, you know, <laughs> sewing up a hem is much better, you know, stuff like that. But um, I just hear the things she taught me mostly. And then I just treasure them. But in the beginning, oh, it was so hard. So hard. So you have my prayers. I was, um, well, let's see, 35 when I lost my mom. Or 38 when I lost my mom. Oh my goodness. So sorry, Rebecca.
Agreed, Sadie. Uh, I am seeing my grandkids, though. Um, we made the choice. My husband and I prayed about it, talked about it, and decided that the influence of not being in our grandkids' lives for a year, because it's going on, you know, what, eight, eight, ten months now, um, we just decided that we wanted to be in their lives, and um, we accepted that risk. We're not doing anything else, though, just our grandkids and kids. So, um, well, you know, we're, we're going to church, but there are such heavy precautions at our church. Um, they're super, super careful, so, but really not doing much of anything else, <laughs> so... <laughs> Aw, Brenda, that's so sweet. If you had, a, if you have a mom that you treasure, and she's still with you, will you hug her for me? Just hug her, and just you know, and just know in your heart of hearts that there might be a day when you can't do that anymore. And um, yeah, just treasure, treasure, treasure your mom. Your grandma, you know, anybody who's this, that kind of figure in your life. You just, you just got to hang on to them while you can. Mm. So sad. Wow, that's crazy. It's kind of surging again in the UK, isn't it? That's what I heard. I think it's starting to here again. Um, not our county, but a county that's less than five miles from here just went back under the red zone. In, in Ohio, they have a rating of different you know, levels of risk and the red is the highest one and Lucas County just went to red uh, again so it was like down to orange our county's been orange for a long time um, but Lucas is back to red hmm. definitely Eighty nine. Wow. 